that's a really good question. It's yeah. and unfortunately, it's a really really difficult one to yeah. answer because like people love to get angry at the censorship. There 100% needs to be censorship yes. on social media. Facebook has to keep off pornography. They have to keep off violence. Mm. Like I don't want to see that when I log in. And if someone gets hacked and someone's posting that stuff, I want it to be taken down before it can even get to my eyes. Like people um, don't realize how deep social media goes into that, into their studies. Like the one thing that I know is the first big pop culture instance of Facebook censoring was, you, you probably remember this, it was in the late 2000s when it was still fairly new, was women were protesting because Facebook was blocking nipples in breastfeeding photos. They said you couldn't post photos of breastfeeding. And these women were like, why not? It's a natural, beautiful thing. So Facebook had to say, well, they said like, well, we don't allow genitalia or breasts. And they're like, well, maybe we can allow them in some ways. And m maybe that's fine. And they said like, as long as the baby is latched, then you can post the photo. And then women would be posting photos where like the baby was clearly just feeding, but wasn't latched. And all these intricacies, I do not envy the people who do that job. Mm -hmm. Like I've had posts, people get so frustrated when they have posts taken down for what seems like an unfair reason. Like I've had posts taken down because I'm doing a thing where like, I want to laugh with Christians. Like I posted a, fo a video of a really, really bad um, parody that some Christians made that it was just kind of super cringe. And I posted, the caption I wrote was like, no, Christians aren't that weird. And they were like, also Christians. And then I put like this really weird parody. <laughs> it was taken down five minutes later for hate speech. And wow. I, I looked at it and I was like, I could see how someone might think that because mm -hmm. it could seem anti-Christian. But um, because they don't know my page, they don't know what I'm doing, that sort of thing, it makes it more complicated. So I've had a bunch of posts taken down for hate speech or whatever. I appeal them. Sometimes they get put back up. Sometimes they don't. But um, there's no way for a tech giant to tell intent behind posting something. And that's where it gets tricky. So you can't be hurt or offended when something gets taken down. It just means they're being extra careful and they wanna make sure if you appeal it and then they still say no, that's a totally different thing. Because from what I understand, that means a human being has looked at it and taken a look at your page and then chosen if it should stay up or not. Yeah. I don't know how often that happens to you guys. It's very rare. It's like once every other month or something. Yeah, maybe. we had one. So there's a meme template where there's a guy's his face is just saying yes. It's called Yes Chad. He's like, yes, basically agreeing with something that normally would be controversial. Like, for instance, you know, oh, you mean you believe everything in the Bible? Like the guy that on the left panel will be some screaming, you know, screeching guy crying like, you mean you believe everything the Bible says <laughs> without question? And the guy's just like, yes. <laughs> and then, then, so we did a meme that was like that where uh, the guy's like just saying, Christians are just sheep. And the guy's like, yes. <laughs> you know, because we're, we're literally the sheep in need of a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the Facebook algorithm took that down and said it was hate speech against Christians um, mm -hmm. because they couldn't see the intent. They couldn't see that it was satire. Um, and unless you're the freaking Babylon Bee with buku bucks to just say, you know, fend off the Facebook algorithm somehow, pages like us are just going to get violations for dumb stuff like that. But I agree with uh, Michael Keir uh, that, you know, there should be censorship. Mm -hmm. uh, some of y'all have never seen Univision and it shows. <laughs> like, they have dead bodies on the news in Venezuela. Like, mutilated bodies. They'll just show it to you with no warning whatsoever. They got, you know, overseas, they'll, they'll just show that stuff to you um, because it's like, well, we feel that, you know, I don't know what the reasoning is, but, you know, we are very protected and it's it's a good thing. I don't want to see that. I don't want my kids seeing that. Um, but, you know, I know there's levels of censorship that people would argue with. There are some gray areas um, and I believe in freedom of speech, but I also believe that a private company has the rights to its own property and it's, you know, what, what they allow people, customers to do on their on their uh, on their product, so it's like, you know, I, in the same way, I believe a baker should be able to turn away um, business. I think that Facebook, Instagram reserve the right to say you can post this and you can't post that. Um, it does get a little tricky if you know you go down the conspiracy theory hole, talking about well, you know, big tech owns 
this. Like, I think, you know, guys like Alex Jones might have, and we're going to get demonetized for this. I apologize. <laughs> if you put this on YouTube, you're not making any money off of it. Not anymore. But like, um, yeah, like Alex Jones has a point when it comes to big tech. That is a thing. Like it's a, there, there is, uh, there are social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram and, and well, Facebook, I guess, incorporated that is so powerful that there's billions of people on there. You know, most of the world is on this platform and, mm. uh, you know, there's really not much competition uh, or there's really no other platform where you can say you can meet just about anybody in the world on there. Um, and I mean, it's a good thing, but it's also a scary thing, the amount of power they have. It's like, what do you do with that? Um, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, and people don't like to uh, admit this, but um, or like to believe this, but when you upload a photo to any, most of the large social media platforms, when you upload it, they scan that photo mm -hmm. to like make sure, like they look at the metadata, where it was taken, that sort of thing. But they also look for anything in the image that might be like they have scanners for like genitalia, stuff like that. Like that's why if you ever try to upload something graphic to Instagram, it won't go up. And if it does, it won't be up for very long. But the one platform that's done a fantastic job at that is TikTok. Uh, I have never seen anything graphic on TikTok, like borderline mm. stuff with like dancing, stuff like that, yes. But what they do is when you upload a video, uh, if there's nothing weird about it, whatever, it'll go up right away. But if you upload anything that has any sort of word, phrase, image, anything that could vaguely be seen as anything negative, it actually won't go live right away. And it'll say, your video is under review, check back for when it's posted. Mm -hmm. So they don't even let it go up until a human being has seen it. Most videos are innocent and they go up right away, but I've had stuff for clients that I've had and for my own page where um, I'll put it up and it just has one word that is innocent but could be taken certain ways or whatever. and an hour later it'll be up. And I'm so glad that they do that because TikTok is a platform where you swipe and you see people you don't follow. So you don't know, it's built on on following strangers and seeing their humor, their point of views, that sort of thing. So to do that and to do as good of a job as they're doing, me just seeing random stuff and never seeing anything too graphic, like hats off to them. It's amazing whatever they're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, what I like to do is put myself in the company's shoes, it's like, how would you handle millions of people uploading material to your platform? Like I know Twitch has some issues too with like, the, some people feel like they're super strict. I know TikTok feel like, uh, I mean, a lot of people feel that TikTok is super strict as well, which I think they can be in a lot of instances, but like how do you, how do you juggle controlling an audience uh, of people that's, that's posting on your platform that are always towing the line, especially sexual mm -hmm. stuff, like on Twitch, like there's this whole thing where people are just like girls mostly, apology, my apologies, but they're trying to get, they're trying to thirst trap and they're trying to do as best as they can to get that, that money, toe the line between Twitch and OnlyFans so that where they're getting, you know, the Twitch audience, but, but not being registered, you know, within the full OnlyFans, you know, um, sexual exploitation area. And then TikTok, I think they're just, they're very, very, um, like strict, uh, cause they'll take stuff down even if it resembles violence or, mm -hmm. or anything like that. So I don't know, like, how would you do it? I would, that's what I like to say. Like, well, how would you do it? How would you run a multi-billion dollar company, uh, that has millions of people uploading? How would you do it? it yeah. It, it, it's also the reason a lot of people aren't staying on Twitter. It, it's the reason why Twitter mm -hmm. is a very unique audience because they allow pornography on Twitter Oh yeah. and mm -hmm. th they allow violence on Twitter. And that shows like because that one isn't seen as the same like monster that Facebook, Instagram and TikTok are right now. Like it's big, it's huge, but it's almost on its own little island compared to everybody else because it has its crowd there that likes it, that understands it. But moms aren't going to go there. Like, you know, p people who want to get away from that stuff because you can't control what people retweet. And if they're not, they've made the decision as a business not to take down pornography or violence. They leave it up and that's their right to do. But I don't like going on there for those reasons. I have one. I look at it once in a while if something's going on on Twitter, but I'm, I never hang out there. And I think that's what I hear from a lot of other people too. Hey y'all, we hope you loved this conversation. Here at Young Married Christian, we are on a mission to see a gospel-centered home made available for every single child in the foster care system. There are 400,000 kids in the foster care system and there are 400,000 churches in America. Wow. 
That is crazy. This is absolutely a solvable problem and we want to be a part of it. If you want to join us in that mission, text the word freedom to 833-370-1610. 833-370-1610. And another thing you can do that is really helpful is to smash the like button on this video. Smash it like Satan's face. Crush it like it's Lucifer's head. It really helps us a ton. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. That's it. <laughs> smash the like button on this video.